We woke up at 4.45 this morning to put our things together at the hotel and drive out here to um, not the trailhead of Blanco Peak, but just to the end of the road for us. There was a part where we could go down, but we're worried like we might not be able to get back up. And in the trail description, several people said they also stopped here. So this is where we plan to park. And I'm glad that we got this far. Um, we started that dirt road when it was pretty dark. And now as you can see, it's getting light. So let's just say that took a really long time. We had two reports on how bad this Lake Como road was. The first report was it was an absolute nightmare that was impassable unless you had the best four x four. And then uh, a group of people at a, the sports store they gave us a different report. I'd say it was somewhere in between, at least when it came to driving this car up here. But we're as far as we can go, and actually this is where we mapped uh, our route from, so this is where we expected to park. So this should be about 14 miles with 6,000 feet of climbing from here. Now we're just hoping that we can get onto the snow quickly and we don't have to walk on rock with our boots for very long. That was probably the worst sounding start of the day I've ever heard. I think the bottom of this car, I don't even want to look. I actually plugged my ears on the way up because it just, it would felt too wrong. Oh, 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 oh. Can you go slower? So I feel like if we go slower, we're gonna get Danny, like, get out of the car. Stuck. <laughs> Give it, we need an extra eighth of an inch. We've got about 6,000 vert to go up. It feels a little wrong being in this dry of dirt and ski boots. I don't know why we have skis on, but I'm sure I'll find out sooner or later. Something I'd like to point out is that we came here knowing that we would need skis, but that we wouldn't necessarily be skiing. It's, uh, these, these skis are merely a means to an end. They're gonna get us to below the ridge uh, and then we'll probably pop them off because there's not enough snow and go up. All trip reports indicate that this is not going to be a great ski day, but um, you know what? When it comes to snowshoes or skis, I'll take skis. If we don't make it back, that's a Kia up for grabs. We've gone two miles and 1,500 feet of vert, and we essentially walked in dry, dusty, frozen dirt for two miles up a big road that has massive rocks on it and ski boots. That was awesome. Probably two and a half miles of walking in our boots on a dirt road. Good thing I don't like these boots anymore. I'm not regretting my boots. My boots could actually handle walking pretty well. But still, it's a lot of walking with skis on your back. Now, hopefully it'll be just snow. Most likely we'll go around the corner and the road will go back to dirt because that's <laughs> usually what happens. That is a long slog. We started out on two and a half miles of road. And I'll tell you, there's nothing satisfying about walking up a road that you could be driving up with a capable four wheel drive. Is anyone feeling the altitude? It's kind of weird because we, we got out of a car at like 9,000 feet. And so you expect to be like, let's just haul balls. You like get out and you're like, I think I'm sick. And it's like, no, you started at 10,000 feet. You know, we did a day very similar in mileage and vertical climb two days ago that felt a lot faster than this one. You know, an unknown approach feels so foreign and mentally takes much longer than the approaches you're familiar with. But we're making progress. 
passing Lake Como, going up this steep part. We're all realizing that we're gonna actually have to do some climbing on the way out, which is unpleasant, but I guess gonna be necessary. got our first glimpse of the saddle in the summit and they both look tame at a distance. I just hope that that uh, stays true. I heard that the walk up the ridge to the summit can be a little hazardous, so that's always in the back of my mind. Now everything hurts. I can't catch my breath. I think I, I can guess what's hurts most of all. Your pride. <laughs> That's how I'm past it. I don't even care. I'm happy to like sit down right here and just wait for you to come down. <laughs> we are just below the saddle. And Kristoff is having his classic Kristoff come apart. He's gonna take some medicine to get rid of his thumping headache that he's had since he uh, intentionally dove his head into the dunes. It's been a long slog, no doubt, and even once we get to the saddle, it's not going to be right there. We still have to go up the ridge on some exposed rock in the wind. Starting to feel the lack of great food and oxygen. But we're kind of stoked to be up here. We're going to leave our skis here and boot up this ridge. Looks sharp, snow filled. I foresee a lot of slipping in our future, but we're gonna boot up the last 500 feet to the summit on this ridge. Kristoff as he realizes how much is left of the day. <laughs> <laughs> we made it, all of us made it, to Blanca Peak, 14,345 uh, feet. The ridge walk to the summit was the best part. So that means out of 14 miles round trip, the last quarter mile was the absolute best. It's an amazing day. I think we're gonna end up with 6,000 feet of climbing. We don't have any 14,000 foot peaks in our state, so we have to drive out to Colorado to get our 14er fix. It's very rare that I get up to 14,000 feet. 14,000 feet feels different on the lungs. I'm telling you right now, I would rather do 8,000 vert at 8,000 feet rather than 500 feet at 14. And you just feel it. You all of a sudden feel like you've got you know, like terminally ill on the last 500 feet. You feel like you're coming down with something. I am honestly a little surprised that I'm up here. And I know Danny hears me say this almost every time that I threaten to just stay on the saddle and wait for him to come down. But like a lot, most, most outings, I know, <coughs> I know I'm gonna be at the summit. And I'm just gonna feel terrible. Today, I, I really didn't know if I was gonna just make it, it was weird. It wasn't even like my legs were burning or anything. I was just weak, <laughs> pure weakness. I must really look bad because <laughs> I've been getting all these, these attaboys and comments from everybody. <laughs> I'm just worried about this downhill ridge walk back to the saddle. After that, once I get my skis on, I can handle just about anything. We are, we are not finding any stops now, 100%. <laughs> We're back at the saddle. 
We're gonna throw on our skis. We're gonna rip out our bases and edges with some rocks, but eventually we'll find our way down to the car. From here on out, it's just gonna be six miles of slow coasting on skis and some uphill work. How was that downhill? Oh, this is the worst. I thought I was gonna break my leg the whole time. It was not an enjoyable downhill at all. Uh, you'd go off of the hard pack trail and just submarine into the softest snow all the way down to the rocks, two feet. Two miles of road walking till we get to the car. Foot by foot, we're getting closer and closer to an, a large pepperoni pizza. And that's what keeps me motivated. Sounded like, as we were talking here by the car, that everybody had fun, but someone might just be lying to feel like they fit in. Now we're gonna head back down this incredibly rocky road, hopefully not pop a tire, and then start our way home. I don't know if I can say I thrived on that one, but I survived. Stuck to it, I told Danny, I'm never gonna have any excuse to like quit halfway up any of these outings because I keep just punishing myself and making myself finish and get to the summit. The skiing down had to have been the low point of the day. That's okay because we came here for other reasons and those reasons delivered. Colorado 14ers are uh, A-OK -okay in my book.